This is Doug Burks with Security Onion Solutions, and we're going to talk about some important changes in Security Onion 2360. Joining me today is our product manager, Mike Reeves, and our director of software engineering, Jason Ertl. So in this presentation, we're going to talk about the changes in Security Onion 2360, some examples that you need to be aware of, and how you can upgrade to get the latest and greatest version of Security Onion. So briefly, what is Security Onion? Security Onion is a free and open platform for enterprise security monitoring, threat hunting, and log management. So you deploy Security Onion to your network, you monitor your network traffic, you collect logs from your servers and from your desktops and other endpoints. You bring all that back and you use that to peel back the layers of your network and to make your adversaries cry. So in Security Onion 2360, we made a lot of big changes, including the latest and greatest version of the Elastic Stack, version 713.2. We uh, are supporting FileBeat modules by default, and we're including Elastic Common Schema support on some of those FileBeat modules. We'll talk about InfluxDB retention policies and the introduction of Elastic Authentication. So to talk about the first few bullet points, I'll turn it over to our product manager, Mr. Mike Reeves. Thanks, Doug. As Doug mentioned, we are gonna be using FileBeat modules in 2360. And one of the things we thought about was how do we make this easy for users to add and remove new modules? And so we've come up with using color entries for those. And we'll walk through that here in a second. Um, any FileBeat, official FileBeat module can be pointed directly to Logstash and it should parse. So for example, here's an a Elasticsearch uh, FileBeat module, and you can see that it gets parsed by the, you know, the actual module and going into Elasticsearch. So we've enabled a few of these modules by default, uh, some of the new ones. So the Elasticsearch will now grab Elasticsearch logs from the Security Onion infrastructure and those will be uh, indexed into Elastic. We'll see, you'll see Redis events, you'll see FileBeat. We did not pull Suricata and Zeek to full EC, ECS support yet. We're still working with Elastic to uh, get a little bit, um, get a way to merge those a little bit differently so that we can uh, pivot easily. So if, let's say you want to add CloudTrail logs to your uh, to your infrastructure. So what you would do is you would, let's say you had sensor one, you would go into the sensor one's pillar and you would add this entry uh, into that pillar at, towards the bottom. Um, so you're just saying, I want to use the third fraud, third party file beat module, AWS, CloudTrail, and you just, you know, you, obviously the spacing is very important, but this would connect to AWS from this machine and it would download those logs. Now it's important and it's important to mention that this is something you do not want to do in your global config because every device in your deployment would then try to download these logs. Our second example here is of Fortinet logs. So in, to add, enable this, you would again take, let's say, sensor one, and you would add this data to the uh, minion pillar. Um, 0.0.0.0 .0 always has to be used, and 9,000. Uh, this port can be changed though, and the salt stack will automatically notice that and it will open that port to the container. It's important to note that you still have to add the firewall ports to the the box using the the normal file or the normal process for firewalls. This is something that can be on a global perspective. If you put this in the global field, all of your boxes could then accept Fortinet logs, but you would need to, uh, you know still take care of the firewall pieces of that. Another introduction is influx DB retention policies. So one of the things we noticed is that for long running grids, the data for influx DB starts to get uh, rather large. We, you know, we have 30 second uh, visibility into those metrics. So what we decided to do is create two new uh, retention policies. Uh, you'll see a trend graph in your, in your graphs. It's a dotted line um, and that's down sample data that's in five minute increments. Uh, you won't, you, you'll notice that you don't see any uh, old data in there. So what you need to do is um, downsample your old data into the into there so that you get it. The, the reason we did it this way is so that that old data could easily be deleted. 
you know, for example, we, we went from, uh, from the security onion side, we went from a six gigabyte uh, influx DB down to 1.3 gigs by just downsampling all of our old data. And that was several months. Uh, you can learn more about how to do this in the release notes and documentation because it's a little something you'll have to uh, read up on and, and, and execute, but it'll, it'll take a while, but it, it, uh, it's definitely worth the space savings. And now I'm going to hand it over to our Director of Engineering, Jason Ertl. Thank you, Mike. So prior to this release, users would log into SOC first and then be able to click the Kibana link to immediately have access to the Kibana user interface. With this initial integration, Kibana was recognizing you as an anonymous user. It had no knowledge of you as a unique user. However, with this release, you will now log into Kibana using the same email address and password for SOC in order to access the Kibana UI. With this feature, Kibana can now identify you separately from other Security Onion users. Again, the password will remain in sync with your SOC login. There's no need to memorize additional logins. Now let's talk about how this affects new installations versus upgrades. For new installations, it's pretty simple. The Elastic Authentication will be enabled by default. For upgrades to existing installations, the Elastic Authentication will not be enabled after the, the upgrade completes. Accessing Kibana will behave just as it did before the upgrade. To take advantage of this new Elastic Authentication, you can run a new script called so-elastic-auth and pass it a true argument. It will take a few minutes to update your grid but once it completes, it will output a list of users that will now need to change their password before they will be able to access Kibana. So with this Elastic Authentication, there's a few notes to be aware of. New users that are created in SOC will automatically be granted access to Kibana. But users created in Kibana will not have access to SOC. So keep that in mind. You typically will want to be creating users through the SOC documentation. Also, all users will be super user by default. They will continue to have identical access for this release. However, we continue to look to improve this integration uh, by introducing user roles in upcoming releases. Also with this release, we're introducing a new script called so-elasticsearch-query. This is a simple wrapper script for curl to remove the need to pass authentication information on the command line. So use this very similarly to curl, where you can pass additional curl arguments as arguments to this script, with the sole difference being that instead of passing the entire URL as the first argument to this script, you'll just pass in the path. And the image in this slide helps, under, helps you uh, with examples on how to use that. That's it for Elastic Authentication. With that, I will turn this back over to Doug Burks. Well, thank you, Jason, and thank you, Mike. Really appreciate you uh, joining us for this video and for all the work that you put into Security Onion 2.3.60. So now that you've kind of learned about all the great stuff that you can expect to see in this latest release, how do you get it? Well, if you've got an existing installation, simply log into your manager, and as you would normally expect, run sudo soup, and it's going to upgrade you to the latest and greatest. So keep in mind all those things that Mike and Jason talked about, all those things are covered in our blog post and release notes and documentation. If you have any questions or problems, of course, you can reach out to us on uh, our discussions forum and get help from the community there. A brief word about Security Onion Solutions. We, in addition to providing the Security Onion free and open platform, we also offer appliances for that free and open platform. We offer professional services, training, and cloud resources. So we have appliances of all shapes and sizes. We provide service and support for those appliances, uh, and we can help you in any way, shape, or form relating to Security Onion as a platform. So again, you can find us on the web at securityonion.net, uh, and we've got documentation out there. We've got a blog. We've got a discussion forum. You can find all of our code on GitHub, 
And as a reminder, Security Onion Solutions provides all the products and services around that platform. Uh, so if you're interested in the quickest and easiest way to get up and running, uh, reach out to us and we'll be glad to help you to peel back the layers of your network and to make your adversaries cry.